Jalen, we got Pete Davidson, Ric Flair, and a dude getting smacked in the face. Steady mobbing. Slap boxing in the street. What a way to make a living. That always led to fist fights. Ric Flair is my guy. Woo! Jalen Rose, I'm David Jacoby. We are Jalen and Jacoby. What is it that we, we make do? sure to give the people what they want? Jalen, Zion Williamson sounds like he wants to play for the Knicks. We have an update on Trevor Lawrence's competitiveness, and we start with the Brooklyn Nets losing to the Miami Heat. They are now one and a half games behind the Sixers in the East. Jalen, can this Nets team be the number one seed in the Eastern Conference? This is the first time you ask me a big question about the Nets, whether it's winning the championship or winning the East or having the number one seed, that I'm going to say no. Oh, I think the Philadelphia 76ers will take the number one seed. Joel Embiid has been outstanding, as we all know, just been so very dominant, looking like a modern day Moses Malone out there. Tobias Harris has been terrific all season. Ben Simmons is in the conversation for Defensive Player of the Year, and we know that Doc Rivers and the team surrounded itself with shooting. I think they understand it, and they're going to go for it. The Nets' injuries are starting to concern me, Jacoby. Yes, yep. like everybody else, I know what I see. If they're healthy, they should win the conference. But we don't know if they're going to be healthy because it's obvious they've only played seven games as a collection this mm -hmm. year. And Kevin Durant could have come back likely in that game because of a knee to the thigh but Knicks happen and all of a sudden that can sway a playoff series as well and so here's what I'll also say about the Nets they're not flawless they're going to struggle defending great bigs in the east yep. NB, Giannis and Bam that issue is not going to go away and also the chemistry is it going to be there new coaching staff New players, new reserves now signed to the team. And so the talent is there, but it's not going to get them the number one seed. Jalen, <clears throat> I live in New York City, and the Nets have three of the best players in the NBA. They have a star-studded, superstar-laden roster, but none of it matters because the New York Knicks cannot be stopped. <laughs> the New York Knicks own New York, and they now have won six games in Not a row. Easy. You so Powered happy. by Derrick Rose, so happy. Julius Randle, <laughs> yesterday beating the Pelicans in a matinee on national TV. This is a New York Knicks town. What do you think about this streak from the Knicks? I think that I love looking at my friend Jacoby, my brother from another, and down at my phone and my emails and happy for so many of my New York Knickerbocker fans that are enthusiastic about this team. Look at Derrick Rose turning the corner with the left hand. Yep. Now, if you're Lonzo Ball, you can't fall asleep defensively. That was piston on piston play right there. Bullock, a former member of our squad too. But at the end of that game, as I want to give the Knicks their prop, Julius Randle has been outstanding, Jacoby. Oh, yeah. Look at the 10 oh, assists. Yeah. His playmaking and his three-point shooting have really elevated. And let's give R.J. Barrett some credit. Second-year player in New York City, improved in points, rebounds, and assists, three-point shooting, free-throw shooting, playing heavy minutes for the Knickerbockers, doing a great job. Julius Randle shot 30% from three the first six seasons in the league, and now he shoots 40% mm. from three. He has turned mm. it on. And one of the things about the success of this New York Knicks team is they're basically auditioning for free agents to make the New York area a free agent destination again, and Madison Square Garden specifically, and Jalen. Let's listen to what Zion Williamson had to say about exactly that after the game. New York is the mecca of basketball. Uh... I love I love playing. I love playing here. Uh, this this atmosphere, you know, whether they're cheering for you, whether they're booing for you, uh, it's amazing. Uh, honestly, I think outside of New Orleans, obviously, uh, I think this might be my favorite place to play outside of New Orleans. I can't even lie to you. I can't lie to you. <laughs> Look at that smile on his face, Jalen Rose. Why is he doing this? This means he's definitely going to be a Knickerbocker, right? He's definitely guaranteed to be a New York Knick based on what he said, right? I got to give a couple of shout outs. And by the way, Spike Lee and Charles Oakley had to sacrifice and crawl for all of you Knickerbocker fans to be enthusiastic. The Zion Williamson speaking into a microphone at his press conference, glowing about what it's like to play on that stage. 
And so while people are going to shout Leon Rose and people are going to shout um, uh, uh, my brother World Wide West, that's one of the coldest nicknames I ever created, by the way. I want to make sure people really give credit to somebody who was in the front office previously that they actually kept. My brother, Scott Perry, who's done a terrific job with that roster and even making sure that not only the young players are productive, like quickly, oh, they got vets. like like he 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 quickly came out of nowhere this year and, and it's been outstanding. But then you get Tibbs, the vets that's going to make the locker room comfortable, like Fort Greens, your brother. Todd, Todd Gibson and mm-hmm. Derrick Rose who turned the corner right there. But here's what I want to say about Zion, and this and this and this is what makes uh, me love him as a, a a young man. The unbridled joy that he has playing basketball. Because when he says he enjoys playing in New York, it's the stage. It's not just like the score of the game. It's the atmosphere. It's being on Broadway. It's the the superstars that are at the game. It's the it, it's, it's the, the marketing the endorsements like y- you understand like as a former nick you know that when you when you perform there everywhere everybody's watching scoring 10 in the garden is like scoring 25 somewhere else and zion <laughs> was really excited about being on that stage and balling absolutely and we had another basketball game that's worth noting last night the dallas mavericks who are in the playing position lost to the sacramento kings so jalen the Mavs complaining about the playing situation, both from Luca and from Mark Cuban, but then go out and lose to the Kings. What does that tell you? Well, it tells me that the Mavs, they're struggling to the finish line in Jacoby and look no further than former New York Nick, Kristaps Porzingis. Yep. I see Luca's numbers, but I'm squinting to see Porzingis' nine points. And you know my vision ain't the best. So I'm like, one for seven right. from three, one right. for seven for right. Porzingis. Right. Okay. Exactly. He's seven foot three. And who would have thought that Julius Randle would be shooting better from three than him in mm-hmm. a season? And so they were supposed to be a dynamic duel. He's supposed to be playing playing like uh, all-star caliber basketball. And I know he's dealt with some injuries and Luke has been outstanding. But if the Mavs are going to advance in the playoffs, it can't just be Luka. It has to be KP playing outstanding as well. It is. And Luka always shows up, as you saw, 37 points in this one. And he was doing his thing. But you need Porzingis to step up. You need the other players on this roster to step up. Because right now, the Mavs, who at the beginning of the season we thought would be a contending team, do not look to be contending for anything else than a playing game at the moment. Jalen, you remember soon to be number one. NFL draft pick Trevor Lawrence. Do you remember what he said about not being competitive and he doesn't have a chip on his shoulder and whatnot? Well, he walked it back a little bit. Here is what Trevor Lawrence said on social media over the weekend about his comments. Quote, it seems as if people are misreading my sentiment. I am internally motivated. I love football as much as anyone. It is a huge priority in my life. Obviously, I'm driven to be the best I can be, to maximize my potential, and to win. I'm secure in who I am and what I believe. I don't need football to make me feel worthy as a person. Jalen, what do you think about him sort of walking back his statements to Sports Illustrated? I just think that he sounds like a mature human being that understands that there's the score of the game and there's the game of life. I'm going to do whatever I can to be the absolute best championship level football player. I want to go number one overall. I want to win in college. I want to win in the league. I want to fulfill my potential. I want to make all the money in the world. But football is not going to be the only thing that defines my life. And this has always been something, as you know, Jacoby, as an athlete, now former, I always make sure that I use this discretion when I'm talking about topics like this, because I always feel like fans and media get so very consumed with this and it can get blown out of proportion. Mm hmm. Well, the idea that the number one pick in the draft comes out and says that he doesn't play with a chip on his shoulder and then his dad says that he would be fine if he didn't win a Super Bowl and that doesn't motivate him. You know what that sounds to me? It sounds healthy. It really sounds healthy. He says, I'm a worthy person without football. Like, literally, that's what he says. I feel like I'm worthy of existence without the game of football. And then we come out and criticize him for saying that. It's like, like, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just saying I'm a person. I'm just saying I'm worthy to exist without this sport. That's all I'm trying to say. And Trevor Lawrence, I look forward to you being the number one pick and hopefully turning around the Jags franchise. Jalen, one thing about you is your namesake has birthed so many Jalens. 
of so many ethnicities and both genders and all. But we have one very special Jalen to feature this week. It's time for Jalen of the Week. This Jalen is the most Jalen Jalen I've ever seen. Let's check <laughs> in on little Jalen. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? It's my house. Okay. <laughs> it's my yard. It's my house. I know. I know. Look at him. Look at that D. He oh. plays D like you too. That's Jalen defense right there. Talk about your trash and don't play any D. Look at him now. No, get him. No, get him, no, little Jalen. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> so a loser. That's me. Talk trash. That's me. Irrational confidence. That comes with the name. I told you it's a superpower, but here's what I like. I like how Big Fella was still schooling them and was ignoring yep. all of the shenanigans. You see how you're looking at him like, you can go ahead with all of that. Well, I'm still behind the back and I'm crossing you down though and I'm gonna hit this mid range. You take that. And now Is you take that, Jalen, this is my house. You know that is the most Jalen Jalen ever. He runs over here and then throws the ball. Like, ah, I'm mad. <laughs> Plays no defense, talks a bunch of trash, and then gets mad when he loses. That sounds very much like your namesake is being carried on by the next generation. We have much more for you when we come back. I love because that kid. we had an epic back and forth battle between two NBA superstars, Jason Tatum and Steph Curry, going back and forth. Stay tuned. We'll talk about that. We got to kill the people.